All right, let's pick up uh, where we just left off, which was, I want to talk about the, the future. You blog a lot, you're creating content, you're, you're up at the, the, the crack of dawn, talking, uh, writing about things. Do you want to talk to me about how you feel that's a part of the future of this economy, of this industry, if you think yeah. that's where it's going? Yeah, well, markets never sleep. Um, you know, I think it's a function of we live in a 24-7 world now, right? Um, everyone's connected. And, you know, I think it's important that we are constantly communicating what we're seeing and what we're doing to our clients, you know, to build continuity as well as their confidence and trust, um, you know, that what we're doing is, is, is benefiting them and they feel, you know, comfortable there. Um, people want to know. There's, you know, we live in exciting times, but it's scary too. You know, geopolitics are, you know, prevalent. Everything impacts, you know, markets. And, you know, when people see news events, they always want to think, what does that mean to me? Right? So there are some times where, you know, I find that, you know, we're, we're here to kind of translate, you know, some of this news into our investment strategies and recognizing opportunities as well as risks. Right? Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, one of the challenges are that, you know, the internet's a great thing. You know, it's, it's connecting everyone. You, you can transact, you know, across the globe. You can communicate, you can share, you know, pictures. You can do a, you know, independent film producers can, you know, come up with something, you know, from scratch, from nothing, right? But at the same time, you know, I think that people can live in a fishbowl, and I think that's what happened during the crisis, right? I think that, you know, the, 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 the losses, you know, we're building on, you know, each other, and then it was creating fear, and fear, you know, turned to panic. And so I think part of the problem is, you know, we have this instant gratification um, attitude now, and sometimes, you know, things need to happen. It's healthy for markets, you know, to go through disruptive periods and, and not panic, you know. But not everyone knows how to behave there, so that's where I find that sometimes, you know, we play the role of a therapist as much as an advisor, you know. And, um, but that's important. It's absolutely important, right? I mean, even today, so we're in here today on a spring afternoon, and all day long since we've been here this morning, the TV was red, exclamation points, bad day on the stock market, everybody's panicking, and you know, I hear the phone ringing and I come in here, and your demeanor is a lot different than that, hmm. very calm. You wanna talk about that a little bit? Yeah, well I think decision making needs to be you know, based on facts and logic, not emotion first. Um, second of all, you know, I think this market could use a bit of a correction and a sell off. Um, you know, I think it's overbought near term. We still think this bull market has a lot of uh, room to run. Um, you know, but we're still pretty close to all time highs. So this is one of the first big sell offs we've seen in a few months. So yeah, I actually think this is healthy. And I find myself as a natural contrarian actually getting excited when there's fear out there. You know, it's kind of that old adage that, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, I'm, I'm gonna come and I know we're rolling, but, um, uh, Okay. Yeah. Whatever his name is. Um, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool and interesting because it's not like you mosey on in, you know, one day a week. It's like you you really live and breathe the market and the environment, and to see a real person, a, you know, and a real reaction from you. You know, because I think sensationalized TV, that's what they want. They want drama, they want... But I mean, when you really sit down with you in, in the office, it was pretty cool. Yeah, well, it, it's really not that big of a deal. I mean, could it be the start of something? Sure. You know, we don't think so now. But if the facts change, we will too. Yeah. But you're right. You're absolutely right. I think, you know, the media in general, whether you're talking TV, print, or online, they're trying to sell... You know, headlines. They're trying to you know create attention. So of yeah, course, which, they're scare tactics. I, I have a question. Sorry to interrupt. What, um, Baron Rothschild is the name. Okay. He was okay. quoted as saying, you know, 
buy when there's blood in the streets. Uh, that's a natural contrarian call. Uh, Warren Buffett says, but you know, he's fearful when people are excited, when they're happy, and he's happy when they're fearful. So typically, are people happy right now? I think there's a lot of complacency. Yeah, not it's not excessively. There's no, there's very, very few similarities to you know the the dot com bubble uh, days. You know, I still think because of the crisis and the nature of the calamity, there's there's still some pretty shallow wounds. I think there's still a lot of skepticism and some you know fear. So because of that, yeah, I, I don't think that we're going to see a major sell off anytime soon. Okay. Um, let's talk about four years. Uh, Bedell Frazier today or this week or is celebrating its 40 year anniversary. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. In April of 1975, Jude started the company. It was Bedell Investment Counseling. Uh, I joined her in 2002. Uh, the firm became Bedell Frazier in 2011, just before my 40th birthday. Oh, wow. Actually, yeah. So, where do we see the future here? Yeah, you know, I think I think the future is going to be, um, you know, a, a, a more polished, more sophisticated version of the present. Um, I, on my watch, I will make sure that the model that Jude started, um, you know, the personalized, customized service, um, you know, the active management of individual securities, um, stocks and bonds, will not change. Um, how we communicate, how we service, absolutely will. It already has. It started with the TGIF. You know, we started uh, writing that in 2004. Uh, that's 11 years old. Wow. Um, we're still one of the few firms that I know of that communicates on a weekly basis. You know, there's some that you know might send out a monthly. I think everyone does a quarterly. Um, you know, there are times where we send out two or three, you know, blasts a week, and I think we're going to do more of those. And I think the you know the the format will change too. We're embracing video, as you know, and the response has been you know very very positive. And I think that's a, that's a really good way, you know, to communicate our thoughts and strategies and perspectives uh, with people. And we're going to give them the choice, you know, of the type of medium that they feel comfortable with consuming. This might be a little redundant, but going back, kind of keeping with what we just talked about, where do you see, uh, ideally, what, what do you see Bedell Frazier, uh, the growth, and the relationship with the clients in the next, in the future? Well, I think this, this firm is built to grow. Um, you know, I see us continuing to build a team of professionals that are in this for the long haul. Um, we have two new partners um, this year, Meredith Rosen and Mike Harris. Um, they are the next generation, you know, I'm generation two, Jude generation one. Um, and I see plenty of years ahead um, under their leadership. Um, I'm not going anywhere, you know. I'm in a good spot right now. Um, and I really love what I'm doing. Um, but I also recognize that it takes a team. You know, this is a firm that's bigger than one person. It's bigger than two people, you know. We have a, a, a team of professionals that are really a family that are acting in the best interest of, of our client base. And I don't see that changing at all. So I think you know, our strategies will continue to get more refined. Our level of service will continue to improve. You know, and we'll become more efficient in how we operate and how we communicate. And hopefully the experience gets better and better with age, like a fine wine. <laughs> That's great. Um, I'm going to try to wrap this up, but you just talked about... Do we want to talk about tech or anything like that? Sure, sure. Things, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to ask one question though while, while we're kind of into it. I want to talk about, so Jude's here, you, you're the su successor, is that? Successor. Yes, yeah, successor. And, and, but she's still here. I want to talk about the dichotomy between you and her and how you guys okay. work together. That'll be good for the 40th probably, yeah, yeah. huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, right. So I, <laughs> when Jude um, decided that she wanted to step down as president, and have me assume that role. Um, I was honored. Um, you know, I had been 
playing the role as the chief operating officer and running the daily operation for a couple of years. Um, and you know she wanted to formally announce that and let clients know. Um, and so I jokingly you know mentioned in front of the crowd that I have finally Jude's boss, and that got a lot of laughs. I'm not sure she laughed all that much. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I, I know Jude and I have a really good thing going. Um, you know, we've complimented each other from day one. We are two totally different people. Um, you know, I think our, our perspectives are different, our thought processes are different, um, our skills are different. Um, but we make for a really good um, combination. And, you know, the transition, I hope, it, you know, seems very smooth uh, and seamless you know, on the outside, and I think she and I make each other better. Um, she has trouble letting go, and I am quick to grab and take and run with it. Um, and you know, I think that there's a lot of entrepreneur in me, and you know, we're type A personalities, and I think that she she values and respects my, you know, go get them attitude, but sometimes she wants to go get them too, and <laughs> so that's where it can be fun and interesting. Um, but. She trusts me implicitly. I trust her implicitly. We know um, that we both have the best intentions in place at all times. We just sometimes have different ways of thinking about how to get there. Um, and I think that's a good thing, you know? One thing that I get from you guys is uh, the constant communication, it yeah. feels like. You, yeah. know? you guys bounce ideas off of each other. That's yeah. neat to see. Yeah, we're ideas people. And, you know, we're always trying, you know, bigger, better, faster, newer, um, you know, we're innovators, you know, and, you know, Silicon Valley is just right down the street from us. Um, and we're always trying to find new ways to, you know, perfect our, our service and the way we communicate, the way we manage portfolios, the way we research new investments. Um, you know, I think it's important to stay ahead of that curve. Uh, you just mentioned Silicon Valley.